I want to share a few reflections with you tonight. This time that we are in now is a special time, the, the time of Sha'ban. It is special for many reasons, perhaps most importantly, because of the dua of the Prophet for this time. The Prophet used to make dua even from the previous month of Rajab. And in this month of Sha'ban, we will say, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajabin wa Sha'ban wa baddighna Ramadan. And this is a dua that I want to recommend for you to recite. Uh, if possible, every night for the remainder of this month of Sha'ban. And if you are able to recite it 70 times every night after Isha, this is a good practice. It will bring you much benefits. The prophetic dua, the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma barik lana fi rajabin wa sha'ban wa badikna Ramadan. So the Prophet alayhi sallallahu wa sallam, made dua for this month of Sha'ban and the dua of the Prophet alayhi salatu is special with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Prophet is his beloved and so the dua of the Prophet alayhi salatu is accepted by Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to the dua of the Prophet alayhi salatu beyond what the Prophet alayhi salatu expects from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And so this time is blessed. That's one reason. Secondly, the Prophet ﷺ described this time of Sha'ban in a special way. This had the Shahri. This is my month, says Rajab Shahrullah. Wa hada shahri. Wa Ramadan shahri al mu'mineen. Aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. The month of Rajab is the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this month is my month. This month is my month. And the month of Ramadan is the month for the believers. So the month of Sha'ba, this time that we are in now, is Shahwa Rasul, the month of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what I want you to put in your heart and put in your mind tonight. Because the, because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam treated this month in a special way. And he loved this month of Sha'ban, this time that we are in now. And tonight represents the high point the pinnacle, the acme of the month of Sha'ban, Nisb Sha'ban. Tonight is the commemoration and the celebration of the great virtues of this month of Sha'ban, the high point of the month. Just as how for Rajab, the high point of Rajab, that month of Rajab, Sha'bullah, is the 27th night of the month of Rajab. The night of Isra Miraj, Miraj in the name of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet alaihi wasallam did not describe Rabia, Rabi al-Awwal, as his month. He described Shaaman as his month, and we observe Rabi al-Awwal in a special way because the month of the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But the Prophet loved this month and treated it in a special way. And one of the manifestations of the connection of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and this month of Sha'ban is the hadith of Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha. She said that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to fast in Sha'ban more than in any other month except the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a total complete month of fasting. And it's far to fast in Ramadan. Allah SWT says, Kutiba alaykum musiyam. Bima'ana furida alaykum musiyam. That siyam fasting is made compulsory when you in Ramadan. But the fast of Sha'ban is not compulsory. Yet the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to fast this month of Sha'ban more than in any other month except the month of Ramadan. Sayyidina Aisha said that the Prophet Ali wasalam, did not fast for two consecutive months except for Sha'ban and Ramadan. No other two months in the year. Sayyidina Abu Huraira in, in the hadith of uh, Sahih Muslim, young Muslim reports the hadith related by Sayyidina Abu Huraira. He said that the Prophet Ali wasalam, he used to fast so much in Sha'ban that they thought he would never do iftar, like meaning stop fasting. And what I want to share with you tonight is that the way of the Prophet the way he would celebrate an occasion is by fasting. That is his way of celebrating something. He used to fast on Mondays, the Hadith in Sahih Muslim. He used to fast on Mondays. And the Sahaba said, why, oh, Ya Rasulullah, why do you fast on Mondays? He said, I was born on a Monday. So he fasted on a Monday because he was born on a Monday, recognizing the day of his birth. What we today we call a birthday. Except that he didn't do it once a year, he did it 52 times a year. Every week he would celebrate his birthday by fasting. Many are the great gifts. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Prophet with and he celebrated by fasting. He fasted in Muharram, Ashura, the tenth of Muharram, to celebrate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, freeing him from the tyranny of Fir'aun. This is the Prophet alayhi salam. So why 
this nothing fast of Shaban so much because there is much to celebrate in Shaban. This is a special time. And tonight is this great night, the high point of the month of Shaban. I want, before I talk something about the celebration of the month, I want to share with you a linguistic analysis of the month itself to show you some of its gifts. What the scholars have mentioned about the month by a linguistic analysis of the word Shaban. This word that consists of five letters of the Arabic alphabet. Sheen, Ayn, Ba, Alif, Noon, Shaban. And the Sheen refers to sheriff or nobility. The Sheen, this first letter of the word Shaban, stands for sheriff or nobility. And this is one of the praiseworthy characteristics of the believer. And the scholars have mentioned that Shaban is a time for you to acquire nobility, for you to acquire sharaf, to become this person of nobility. In your quality, in your characteristic, Shaban is the time to do it. And you do this by following in the footsteps of the Prophet To become of noble character, and so I want you to recognize this gift of Shaban so that you can acquire it. Ramadan also has gifts that it brings for us. It brings some special gifts for us. There are three specific ones and I want to ask you what these gifts are for Ramadan. And the hint is the hadith of the Prophet Ali and he, he said he divided this month into three parts. So my question to you, what are the three gifts that Ramadan brings to us? First one. Nothing. You're on the right track, but I want the specific answer. Rahmah. Rahmah. Mercy. One of the gifts of Ramadan it's mercy, rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's described as shahrul rahmah. That's one. Second, second gift. Who wants to tell me what is the second gift from Allah? Forgiveness. Maghfira, forgiveness. Aw satahu maghfira. It brings you maghfira. Forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third gift. Anyone else? Yes, an itku minanar. The greatest freedom you can ever achieve in your entire existence is freedom from hellfire. That is the greatest freedom for you. Ramadan brings you these gifts. But my question to you now is if someone stays at home during Ramadan, doesn't come to the masjid, doesn't do anything at the masjid or at home, doesn't fast, no suhoor, no iftar, no tarawih, no recitation of Quran. Will they acquire the gifts of Ramadan? Because they're not different from a non-Muslim in their actions. You have to do something in Ramadan to get the gifts of Ramadan. In a similar way now, the gifts of Shaban. You need to follow the way of the Prophet Ali the Sahabas. How would they used to be in Shaban? What was their spiritual state in Shaban to acquire the gifts of Shaban? The first of which is sheriff or nobility. The second letter of the word is Ayn, and the scholars have mentioned it stands for Ulu, sublimity. To become sublime, elevated. Sublime in your qualities. This sharaf or nobility and then the ulu or sublimity is manifested by your action. By your action. Someone who has ulu and one of his implications is elevation from a'ala to be high. 
is that your deeds, the things you see in your words, and the actions that come from you are supplying deeds. <coughs> your tongue, your tongue you use only to see what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The tongue that you speak with to others, don't be harsh and coarse in your, in your words when you speak to others, no matter who they are, no matter who that person is. Speak to each and every one you come in contact with with the best words possible. Man kana yu'min billahi wal yawmil akhir falliyakul khayr. You believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the last day? Then only say what is good or let's be quiet. So the words that come from you must be good words. If you don't have something good to say, be quiet. And silence is a form of sublimity. You can be sublime more when you are quiet than when you are noisy. Shaban is the time to plant this seed and cultivate it in your character, in your personality. To acquire this quality of being, a quality of sublimity. And then you'll acquire that gift. You'll acquire that gift. Allah bless you so that for the rest of the year, and inshallah, the rest of your life, you will have this good quality of sharaf and hulud. The third letter of this word is ba, and the scholar said it stands for bir. Bir. True, sincere piety. Bir is an amazing Islamic concept, Quranic concept. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers in beautiful ways, their qualities. The Muslim believers are described like this. The ones who are uh, constant in establishing their prayer. Muttaqoon, the ones who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mu'minun, true believers in Allah and so on. The Quran, the believers, Muslims are described in good ways, good qualities. And at the peak of all of these qualities is Bir. Bir the essence of every other good quality and the root of it, Bil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, لَن تَنَاهُ الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُنْفِقُونَ Yes. <coughs> you will never attain piety, this great characteristic of the believer, unless and until you spend for Allah. Your wealth, the thing you love. <coughs> the Prophet, Prophet Ali Salasi used to remind the Sahabas about this. Allah didn't say, when Tanadul Birra, you will never achieve Birra on this until you pray a lot. Because for too many people, praying is easy than giving. If you Make an announcement at June tomorrow. Imam does this. I want everyone in the masjid donate five pounds or pray two rakat in the salah. Make your choice. You see people praying the two rakat. All those people who are rushing out to the masjid and don't want to pray their sunnah, they'll do the two rakat rather than give the five pounds. It's easier to do other things than the gifts of Allah that says, It's an amazing quality to have. To spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the, 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 the Prophet used to train the Sahabas to do this. He would do fundraising with the Sahabas. He would appeal to them, give to the light of Allah. They had something called a Baytul Mal in the time of the Prophet. And Sahabas used to be assigned to guard it. 
There is a famous hadith of Sayyidina Abu Huraira and Iblis Shaitan came to Stephen by Jamal. It talks about the virtuous eye to Kursi because he was guarding the by Jamal. But whenever there was any expedition to go for jihad and so on, the soldiers had to be prepared with horses, with supplies, with food, with so many things. Prophet would appear to the Sahabas, care for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember on that occasion, the competition between Sayyidina Umar al Khattab, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Sayyidina Umar always wanted to outdo Sayyidina Abu Bakr, brought half of what he owned. But then Sayyidina Abu Bakr brought everything that he owned. You know, Sayyidina Umar came to the Prophet Ali with his whatever you. He wanted to give, the Prophet asked him, what did you bring? For Allah, his messenger, what did you leave for your family? He said, and this is a great commitment. You wouldn't find anyone today doing it. He says, I divided everything I own into half. I brought half of it for Allah, his messenger, and left the other half for my family. And think about your assets. Put all the assets together and divide it in half. Say, so you want to give for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's difficult to do. Difficult. I tell you, two and a half percent is difficult for many Muslims to do. Many of them don't do it. I usually tell them, don't bother. Don't think about the two and a half percent you're giving. Think about the ninety-seven and a half percent Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is allowing you to give. Subhanallah. And He will bless you in that ninety-seven and a half percent because you give two and a half percent. Blessing from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This is an important concept because it is the very essence of. The strength of the woman. And it has consequences for us. So they say, Abu Bakr came. Yeah, Abu Bakr. What did you bring for Allah as a messenger? What did you do for a family? Say, Abu Bakr said, Brother Allah, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I brought everything I own for Allah and his messenger. And I left Allah and his messenger for my family. Then that brother. That was just before Badr. On the night before the battle, Prophet Ali Sallallahu is praying in his height and his tent. He's crying. Ya Rasulullah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we are few in numbers, we are ill-equipped. If you allow the enemies to defeat us, who will worship you, O oh Allah? Prophet is crying. Turning to Allah in dua. After what Sayyidah Aisha came to him says, Ya Rasulullah, Kafa, enough, enough. The Prophet said, he told Sayyidah Bakr, he said, I saw angels coming in the sky from the heavens to help us. And all of them are dressed in the same way you were dressed in that torn piece of clothing when you brought all your wealth oh, for Allah. 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 That's the consequence. That's the consequence. That's the consequence. And we, our Ummah, we have a wonderful practice of this Ummah. Our parents, our grandparents, when we are young growing up, young boys and young girls growing up, they will give us something. Go and put it in a donation box in the masjid. Go and do this. Give us some food. Take it to the neighbor. Go and give them our neighbors. The older ones among us, even young, so you may have experienced that. Your peers or grandparents giving you something to give to others. Even if they're poor, especially if someone in the family is, is ill, they cook something. Go and give it to someone. Put it in, put something, food, something. Share. Share. Because the train them, we young, train us to spend for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the great quality of God. لَن تَنَالُ الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِقُوا Tonight, I tell you, Shaban brings this gift for you. If you love Shaban, and the Prophet Ali Yisrael Sallam loves Shaban, and if you treat Shaban in a special way, and the Prophet Ali Yisrael Sallam treated Shaban in a special way, you will be blessed with bitter. You will be someone who would easily spend for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Spend what Allah has given you, your wealth, or your time, or your knowledge, or your experience, or your skills. Spend for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
give to him for others. Few are those who are doing that today in our own. And when we acquire this quality of birr and spending for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has given us, we will become strong. We will become strong. Sha'ban is that opportunity for us. Love it and treat it in a special way. It will happen. It will happen. Some of you may ask, how? This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One example I share with you is among the countless blessings of salawat and darul on the Prophet sallallahu If someone has a harsh personality, they're harsh, they're coarse. The way they speak, loud and harsh with people, is they're just like that. Maybe you know someone like that. And if they start reciting salawat and darud profusely, frequently, all the time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes their personality. They become smooth and soft. I have given that was leave to several people and it, it works. It works. They come and they complain. They're, they're just harsh with their children and they, 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 they shout to them and they, they saw it outside and cry and they feel so sad. For three, four days they're sad because of what they did. Can't control himself. Recite salawat. Recite all the time. And you will see how your character changes because of your recitation of Dawish. That's one of many examples. And your law for Shaban will cause that to happen. Because you do it in the near. Because the Prophet Ali is Allah's son, law of this month. You do that, you will see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does for you because of his beloved Prophet. So this, this is bir that you need to be mindful of. The fourth letter is Alif. And it stands for the scholars which it stands for Ulfa, which means spiritual intimacy. Ulfa, spiritual intimacy, spiritual harmony with you and others. Your love for Shaban, you treating Shaban and this night of this Shaban Shabi Marat in a special way will allow you to be blessed with Ulfa, spiritual harmony. Now, what it is, spiritual closeness to others. You want to be close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to feel close to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to have this love in your heart for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Love this month of Sha'aban. Treat this night of Nisb Sha'aban in a special way. Turn to Allah with devotion and worship and dua and dhikr. And you will have ulfa in your heart. Allah SWT will soften your heart. And you would love Allah, and you would love the Messenger of Allah, Rasulullah Sallallahu You would love the Ahlul Bayt. You would love the Sahabas. You would love the Awliya of this Ummah. You would feel close to them. <coughs> this is what happens when you open your heart to love this month of Shaaban and this Shaaban, because the Prophet Ali Sallallahu loved it, and he treated it in a special way. The fifth and final letter of the word Sha'aban is Noon and it stands for Noor, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your love for Sha'aban, your treat, treatment of or treating of the night of Nisb Sha'aban in a special way will bless you with Noor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a nur of Muhammadiyah, the Muhammadan nur in your life. And the effect of that is that it dispels darkness from your life and replaces it with brightness. <coughs> Sayyidina Al Abbas, the noble uncle of the Prophet, Ali, so he mentioned this. He mentioned this. In those early days of Mecca, which is, some of the scholars said this perhaps the first or one of the first lines of Maulid 
of Maulid recitations, this Milad and Nabi, that some people say today it's Bidah. Well, the Sahabas did it. And this is one example where you praise the Prophet Ali Islam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you came to us and we were in darkness. And your Noor dispelled that darkness and brightened the way ahead of us so we can see clearly now. Praising the Prophet Ali Islam. This was in Mecca, the early days in Mecca. Sayyidina Hassan in Medina, many, many uh, words of poetry to praise the Prophet, and that's Maulid. That's what we do in a Maulid. We recite words of poetry to praise the Prophet, so that we can develop love for him. So, this Noor now brightens the way for us, the Noor that we will acquire in Shabbat, and this night is the time to acquire it. The night of Nisf Shabbat. The 15th of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made special. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran reveals, chapter 44, Hami wa kitab al mubin inna anzalam fi laylatin mubarakatin inna kunna mundirin fiha yufra kukullu amrin hakim amra min indina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this night of Nisf Shabbat. Several of the scholars of Islam, even from among the Sahabas, are quoted to say that this ayah refers to Laylat al Nisf Shaban or Shemi Barat, the night of the middle of Shaban, the 15th night of Shaban. When many things, many decrees are distributed on this night are released as it were. The records are released on this night. The other scholars have said this ayah refers to Laylatul Qadr, the 27th night of Ramadan. The scholars have reconciled this to say that the, the Qadr that's released in Shaban, the night of Nisfah Shaban, is for the rest of that year, from this Shaban to the next Shaban, or this mid Nisfah Shaban to the next Nisfah Shaban. Where is the the color of Laylatul Qadr that's released is for an entire lifetime. Laylatul Qadr yi khayru min alfi shaharin more than 83 years. That's what it's called to reconcile it. But not, no one will deny the importance of this night of mid of Shaban. Even those who may say it's bid'ah to observe the night, they cannot deny that the night itself is special. It has intrinsic special qualities because there are so many authentic hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about this night. Allah. And so this night is a celebration of this, the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He loved this month of Sha'ba and he observed this night in a special way. And he said, Hada Shahri, this is my month. And I want to share with you a couple of examples why the Prophet Ali loved this month in such a special way. The ayah of change of people. The Muslims, they used to face Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem as the first Qibla. Throughout those years of Mecca and the early years in Medina, that was the Qibla. But the Prophet Ali desired a different Qibla. Listen to this. The Prophet Ali wanted something unique for his Ummah. Masjid al-Aqsa al-Quds, Jerusalem, was already shared by Ahlul Kita, the Christians and Jews. It was their special place. The Prophet wanted something different, or it was something unique. He wanted Mecca. He loved Mecca. Mecca, the city of his birth. Yes, he loved Mecca. He's in Medina. He loved Mecca. 
Medina has special virtues and fawaiyat. In fact, the Prophet prayed, made a special dua from Medina. Amazing dua. He said, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Allahumma, bless Medina with twice what you bless Mecca. It's amazing. It's amazing. Medina is like no place on this earth, including Mecca. You go to Medina and you experience this. The way you feel in Medina is different from any other place, including Mecca. The peacefulness, the serenity, the sakina you feel in Medina, different. And the reason why is because of the prophets of Allah. <laughs> The secret of that place is not in the place itself. It's because of the person who occupies that place. <laughs> Medina is Medina to Nabi. The city of the Prophet He is Sahib al Makan. He is the man of that place. And it's because of him, Medina is special. If he did Hitra to Ta'if, we would be doing Ziyara to Ta'if and not to Medina. Special. The Prophet loved Mecca. When, when he did Hijra, he was leaving Mecca. After he went to the Sayyid Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu to Jabal Fawr, then set off to Mecca, to Medina, Tariq Medina. On the outskirts of Mecca, he stood up on the back of his horse. He turned around, stood up on the back of his horse to Mecca. He said, Oh Mecca, I love you. Oh Mecca, I love you. I would never leave you except your people expelled me from you. This is the Prophet Ali said, see him his word. He wanted Mecca to be the Qibla for his followers. This is his personal desire. He never raised his hand and made dua to Allah out of his adab with Allah, out of his shyness with Allah. Didn't make dua. This is his personal desire in his heart. He, uh, this is what he, he wants. But he wouldn't make dua to Allah. He's shy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al Tirmidhi described the Prophet Ali his salam, salam, said the Prophet alayhi wa sallam, was more shy than a bride on her wedding night. Allah. 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 But he wanted it. This is his heart. And the occasions, there many times he would gaze up, he would look up into the heavens, expecting Jibreel Islam coming down with revelation to change the Qibla. Never saying anything. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the eye to change the Qibla. And he starts off. He starts off this revelation by mentioning this action of the Prophet. We, we know, we are aware of your gazing up into the heavens, expecting this revelation. We know. What is Mother saying? Look how he honors the Prophet. The Prophet doesn't want to say anything, just looking up. Personal design. Allah SWT, by revelation, mentions it now. We know you gazing up into the heavens, expecting this revelation. We'll give you a kibla, you will be pleased with it. You will be happy. Allah SWT is addressing his beloved in this special way. We'll give you a special kibla, you'll love it. Wherever you are, Haytuman, wherever you are. For one shatra, Majil Haram. Wherever you are, turn towards Majlul Haram. This is your Qibla. From now on until the Day of Judgment. The new Qibla for the Muslims. This ayah of the change of Qibla was revealed in the month of Sha'ban. Tonight is the time of celebration of this time. Tonight is the time of celebration for this. The Prophet loved this. It brought great joy to his heart when his eye was revealed. He loved him. 
Hallelujah, Sherry. He described, this is my mind, Shabbat. Tonight is the night for us to commemorate that. Another quick example, the eye of Salawat. Allah. From Surah Al-Azhar, chapter 33, verse 56, Allah SWT reveals, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallimu baraka ala shaykh al-Nabi It's the ayah of Salawat Unique honor for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this ayah, in this revelation in a unique way that no, none of the other creation of Allah, no human being, no angel, none of the believing jinns, none of the other creation of Allah were honored before or after. As how Allah SWT honors His Prophet in this ayah. Allah SWT says, In Allah, early Allah, you salute my sends blessings on the Prophet. So Allah is doing this. Allah is doing this. Sending salawat and darud on the Prophet No one can force Allah to do anything. No one. Allah SWT has no need to do anything. He is free from any need. But He chooses to do this. For His beloved. Yes. To show us, yes, Rasulullah is truly the most beloved of Allah. He is the Habibullah. Only him, Habibullah. <coughs> then Allah SWT says, In Allah wa malaikatahu. And the angels of Allah, all the angels of Allah, without exception, all the angels of Allah, you saluna ala nabi. They send blessings on the Prophet No matter what else they're doing, angel of revelation, angel Minkar and Nakir, Kiram and Katabin, the question angels in the great, the recording angels with us, whatever duties they have, they're all sending salawat on the Prophet in Allah wa malaikatan. And then the unique command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us, to the believers. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amin sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. A unique command. There is no other command like this. Why? Because Allah SWT says, He does it, therefore you do it. Allah SWT commands us to pray, but He never tells us, He prays, therefore you pray. Commands us to fast. In Ramadan, never tells us, He fasts in Ramadan, therefore you must fast. Commands us to give zakat. Doesn't say, He gives zakat, therefore you should give zakat. Commands us to do hajj. Doesn't say, He does hajj, therefore you should do hajj. But He says, He does salawat on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah. Do it. Unique command from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this ayah of salawat was revealed in this month of Sha'aban. On a night like tonight, we celebrate this, we commemorate this. The Prophet said, Hada Sha'ari, this is my month. This is my month. SubhanAllah. There are many other examples of why this month is special for the Prophet and not for the believers. But those two are good enough for us. I want, perhaps in the concluding part of my presentation, to mention some of the virtues of this night of Shabi Barat, of Nisfa Shaban. And perhaps the best way for you to understand something about this night and its fada and its virtues is to look at the names of this night of Nisfa Shaban. <coughs> So we can comprehend its virtues. Imam Abu Khair al Talikani, one of the great Imams of his time, he said, Kathratul Asma tadullu ala Kathratul Khair. That if something is known by many good names, it is an indication 
of the goodness of that thing or that person. You know, just think about it. some good person, some elder in your family or someone who is known to be a good person. They have a lot of good names. People call them good names. Good, respectful names. If someone has many good names that they're known by, it's an indication that that's a good person. If something has good names that it's known by, it's an indication of the goodness of that thing. Kaaba, Kaaba tul Musharrafa, Baytullah, Baytullah Ati, and you go on and on. So many names, good names, because it's the house of Allah, it's special, that's good qualities. Allah! And Shami Barat, Niswa Shaban, has many good names. Scholars, scholars have list, listed more than 40 names for this night, tonight, the night of mid of Sha'ban, Shami Barat. The first of which is we have Shami Barat, Laylatul Bara'ah, or Shami Barat, Laylatul Bara'ah. The night of absolution, for you to gain, to be absolved from things, from your sins, from your responsibilities, and so on, so many things, to be absolved from it, this Bara'ah. To gain this freedom. So the Prophet ﷺ says in his authentic hadith, on this night of Nisr Shaban, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees more people from the fire of hell than they are hares on the sheep of Bani Kaul. Bani Kaul is a tribe in the Arabic Peninsula. And they were known to be livestock rearers, they rear livestock, sheep, goat, and so on. That's their career for generations and generations. That's what they do. So they have a lot of it. Now, can anyone count the number of years on one sheep? It's too much. There's so many. Think about how many for all of them. Prophet said, on this night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees from the fire of hell more believers than the number of years on the sheep of Bani Kal. This is the, this is an authentic hadith. There is no one, including our Bidati friends, who would reject this hadith about this particular topic because it's the authentic hadith in Bukhari, in Muslim and so on. If the night was not a special night, why would Allah subhanahu wa do it on this night? Allah. The night is special. Don't let anyone discourage you from observing this night. I say once again, this commemoration of Nisf Shaban is one of the most important symbols of Sunni Islam. You need to strive to revive it. So, Laylatul Baba. It is also called Laylatul Mubaraka. From the Quranic ayah, Hami wal Kitab al Mumin, Inna anzalna hu fi laylatin mubarakatin. It's a blessed night. It's a blessed night. It is also called Laylatul Qisma, the night of distribution. Many of the things are distributed on this night, including risk and sustenance. If you want your risk and your sustenance to be increased, this is a night to make special dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. This night. Of Shabi Barat Nisr Shaban. Then, this night, among the things that are distributed are the names of those who will pass away in the next year. The angel of death received this information on this night. And he has this group of angels that would help him in fulfilling his duties and responsibilities. This is a night. So the day of Mr. Shabbat, the Prophet said he loved to fast. He wants to be fasting when this is decided. That if he is to pass away the next year, he wants to be fasting when it's decided. On Thursdays he used to fast every week. The Sabbath is asking why? Because of Rafa al-Amal. 
Raising up the weekly deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from saying, I want to be fasting with my deeds are presented to Allah. He's the messenger of Allah, but he can do it. What about us? And for Shahbani would fast, and one of the things he said, our annual deeds are raised up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants to be fasting when this happens. To, uh, to ensure kubul, acceptance of deeds. This is the Prophet Sallallahu What about us? Why should we be doing it? So, this night. It's called Lalat takfir night of exp expiation, expiation from sins. Lalat al the night of answering dua. And I want to, there are many others, but one final one for this night. It's called Layl to Eid al Malaika. The night of the Eid of Angels. The night of the Eid of Angels. This night of Shabi Barat is the Eid of Angels. For the believers on this earth, there are two days of Eid annually Eid al Fitr, Eid al Adha. Days of Eid for us. For the angels, there are two nights of Eid for them annually. 27th night of Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr. And the 15th night of Sha'aban, Laylatul Nisfi Sha'aban, Shabi Barat. On this night tonight, Tanazzal Malaika Tiwarruhu Fiha. Be in the Rabbihim. Yes. The angels are with us now. The angels descend on this earth before Maghrib. On this night, not too long ago. Looking, searching for groups that are gathering together to observe this night. Even those in homes doing it. Whoever is observing this night to be with them and to join with them in thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are more angels on this night on earth than on other nights. They, many of them come down to be with the believers. I tell you, the angels love when you obey Allah. The angels love when you obey Allah. When you do dhikr of Allah, you do it regularly in your home. You get up every morning and you do dhikr, we're the lion with other dhikr. The angels come and join you. And then after a while, they see you dhikr regularly, they will come before you. And will sit down there, waiting for you to get up and come and do fajr and do your dhikr. The angels, they laugh when you obey Allah. And there are times, if you sleep away, they come and they wake you up. Maybe some of you experienced this. You, you were sleeping, getting late for Fajr, and you feel someone shaking you. You feel someone shaking you. You wake up, you look around, there's no one there. The angels are waking up. Let's pray. This night of Shaban, Nisfi Shaban, Shabiwara, the Eid of Angels. Remember this, so you spend the night with the angels in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, as for the things to do on this night, the scholars have mentioned, recite Surah Yasin. There's an amazing relationship, spiritual relationship between Surah Yasin and the month of Shabbat. I can't talk about it tonight, but it's really amazing that connection between Surah Yasin and the month of Shabbat. Great spiritual relationship and connection. But it's called Subvention, recite Surah Yasin at least three times. Let's say three times on this night. With three different niyya. Three different niyya. Uh, for protection uh, from evil, uh, to have all your needs fulfilled, and to have a long life. To be in no need of anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me talk about risk all your arm. Yes. And then the special dua of Nisfi Sha'aban. Allahumma ya dal mani wa la yumanu alayhi ya dal jalali wa likram. And so on to the end of that dua. Beautiful dua that the awliya of the Sumah uh, suggested that we recite. Try to do that. Uh, there is Salatul Khair. Salatul Khair that you should do. If possible, 100 rakat. The time is short, you may not be able to do 100, at least maybe 10 rakat. And then for the rest of the night, for the rest of the month, you can try to finish on your 100 rakat in units of two. So 50 by two, 100 rakat. The recitation is the same in both rakat for Salat al Khair. Uh, in the first rakat, Surah Fatiha, followed by 10 times Surah Al Ikhlas. 
And in the second rakat, Surah Al-Fatiha, followed by ten times, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Qul huwa la wa hadda Allah wa sallam lam yalid wa lam yalid wa lam yalid wa lam yalid wa lam This is a surah that has great spiritual benefits. So, your hundred rakat, you will finish a thousand recitations of Surah Al-Ikhlas. If you cannot do all of it on this night, you can do some of it, and for the rest of the nights of Shaban, you can make me to finish it off, inshallah, fast. Tomorrow, these are some of the things you're dua. It's a night for dua. Whatever you want, you need from Allah SWT, whatever problems you're having, difficulties in your life, and so on, turn to Allah SWT. This night in dua, 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 and the care of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless each and every one of us. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept all our dua and our ibadat on this blessed night of Nisf Shaaban. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless us with the special gifts of Nisf Shaaban and make our lives better. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala place love of this month of Shaaban in our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this love for Shaban bless us to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to love the Ahlul Bayt, to love the Sahabas, to love the Anbiya and Mursaleen, to love the Awliya of this Ummah, and to love the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of our love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. These are a few uh, one, things I wanted to share with you tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ونصلي ونسلم على النبي الكريم الحمد لله يا ملك العاد تسد بديو to visit you in this new mosque and this is the mosque Mr. Arfan جزاه الله خيرا till now this is the mother of the mosques here and I come from the mother of all the mosques in بلاد الشام and this time, Al Masjid Al Aqsa. Al Masjid Al Aqsa is the first Qibla of Islam. Our Prophet makes prayers about uh, 16 or 17 months uh, to Al Masjid Al Aqsa, and after that, our God uh, took the Qibla from Al Masjid Al Aqsa to Al Masjid Al Haram. Al Masjid Al Aqsa is the second Masjid built. Uh, in the land, in the earth, and our Prophet ﷺ came to this mosque in Isra and Mi'raj, and many prophets before our Prophet ﷺ came to this land, to the Masjid Al-Aqsa, uh, all the ulama said the first uh, uh, prophet and messenger came to this places our father Adam and after that uh, his sons and all the prophets from Nuh and Ibrahim Ishaq and Yaqub and Yusuf and their wives all these prophets graves in Hebrew uh, this uh, uh, country this village behind Jerusalem about 25 miles from Jerusalem and Mr. Rabah he born there Mr. Rabah he born in Hebrew yes and this is uh, area it's for the prophets, for the prophets, this area. And if you visit there and we ask our God to give you the chance and to go there and to visit there, you can to see the prophets uh, with the mihrab of the mosque under these 72 steps, you can to see the prophets. But in the high, you can to see the makamas the Makams there. And around this area you can see Prophet Lut and Prophet Yunus and Maulana Abu Abbas Al Khidr uh, You know Al Khidr. He is a teacher of Prophet Musa in Surah Al Kahf. And a grave 
the Prophet Musa السلام, in the road to Jerusalem. And our Prophet وسلم, said in Hadith Sahih, I saw my brother Musa السلام, he make prayers in his grave. Oh, in his grave. And our God gave him the gifts, all the prophets in Jerusalem, in Al-Masih Al-Aqsa, all the angels. And our the prophet is the leader for all prophets. And he make Imam Salat there. Sayyidina Jibreel, tell him you are the Imam. And behind him, Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Isa, Prophet Musa, all the prophets behind him, and he is the leader. At that time, they give him the leader of the message of the Nubuwa and leader for the land. The land is before with Roman and with force, and from now it's for Islam. This land is Islamic. Al Masjid al Aqsa is for every Muslim in all the world, not for Palestinian, not for Arabs for every Muslim in all the land. You must to visit us in Al-Aqsa Mosque. You must to visit us in Jerusalem. Because you visit, give us the power and the Iman and the Rebat to stay there. We are in the face of the Jewish there. We are there in Rebat. We want help from every Muslim in all the world to come to us, to visit us, to stay with us, to pray in the mosque. Before 30, 35 years, we make Salat Fajr in Al-Aqsa Mosque about just 50, 60 persons. Now, Alhamdulillah, we make Salat Fajr about 1,500. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I make last khutbah before uh, five days in Al-Aqsa Mosque for six days. Last Jumu'ah, 15,000 listened about the khutbah, and this is it's very little because Al Aqsa Mosque every Jumu'ah about 150,000 persons there. In Ramadan, 200, 300, 250,000. In Laylatul Qadr, half million. 400,000 persons make salawat. Al Jumu'ah in Ramadan in Al-Aqsa Mosque. Every night, every night, about 100,000 persons make Salat Tarawih with us in Al-Aqsa Mosque. This is the power. This is the power. We want all the Muslims came to us to tell the Jewish this is land not for the Jewish, this is for Islam. Yes. Alhamdulillah, our Prophet came in Isra al Mi'raj. And our Prophet وسلم, make Mi'raj from the right of the dome. And he meet in the first sky our father Adam السلام. In the second, he meet Prophet Isa and Prophet Yahya. And you know, the Prophet Isa now he is the second sky. Our God took him from the Mount Olives. And in the last time, he came to Damascus by angels in Manara, white Manara there. And after that, he came to Mount Olives in Jerusalem. Mount Olives, it's far from Jerusalem, about one mile just. Isa السلام, came to Al-Aqsa and he entered from the door, its name Golden Gate. And he made the Hayyan Masjid and he made his prayer al Fajr with Imam al Masjid al Aqsa. I think in the third time, Imam al Masjid al Aqsa, he is Imam Muhammad al Mahdi. Imam Muhammad al Mahdi, he is from the sons of our Prophet, وسلم, from Al Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra. And he is the Khalifa of Islam. The Khilafah of Islam, it is in Jerusalem. And Mahdi alayhi salam, he is the leader, he is the Imam, he 
is the Khalifa in that time. Prophet Isa came and he made with him prayers. And after that, Isa السلام, killed the jail in the area it's named Lut. It is in Hadith Sahih. And after that, Isa السلام, married in Jerusalem. He has wife. He is not God. He is not the son of the God. He is not uh, uh, like the Christian said. Christians said uh, the, Jew, the Prophet Isa is the God. Some of them said he is the son of the God. Some of them said uh, one, two, three. They said Isa is a prophet. In the Quran, when he came, it's Qareeb judgment. Isa has two sons in Jerusalem. When he died, the Muslims took him to Al Madina. Al Madina, there we have four graves. The first for our Prophet ﷺ in the house of Sayyidah Aisha. Behind him, Sayyidah Abu Bakr Siddiq. Behind him, Sayyidah Umar. The fourth grave without anybody now. But in the last time, the Muslims put Prophet Isa ﷺ. Sayyidah Aisha, she saw in his dream, three moons in his house. Three moons, Akmar in his house. When our Prophet Sallallahu died, his father, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, tell to Sayyidina Aisha, this is the first moon in your house. This is the first moon in your house. I want to tell you something. The land of Palestine, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak, it's the land of Al Baraka. If one prayer in Al Masjid Al Haram, one hundred thousand, in Al Masjid Al Nabab, one thousand, in Al Masjid Al Aqsa, some ulama said seven hundred, some ulama said five hundred. It's the land of Al Baraka, Ard Al Nur. And I want to speak now something, but Mr. Arfan. Come to make translate. <laughs> when you want to win. Ardu Filastin, Hia Ardu Al Ambiya, Iwal Awliya, Iwal Shuhada, Iwal Ulama. The land of Palestine is the land of prophets, of pious people, and of the scholars. Wahia Ardu Al Mahshari, Iwal Mansha. And this is also the land of the gathering. وَمِنْهَا يُنَادِي إِسْرَافِيلِ And from here, Israfil will call. قال الله تعالى في سورة قاف واستمع يوم ينادي المنادي من مكان قريب قال المفسرون من صخرة بيت المقدس. The verse that has just been recited, this is in relation to Israfil calling and the Mufassirin have said that that particular place of calling will be the, the rock of the Lord of the Rock. والحمد لله جاء إلى بيت المقدس أمير المؤمنين عمر في السنة الخامسة عشر من الهجرة ومعه أكثر من أربعة آلاف من الصحابة رضي الله عليهم أجمعين. We know that Sayyidina Umar who came to Masjid Al-Aqsa and he had more than 1400 Sahaba with him. ودفن في الأرض المقدسة جمع كبير من أصحاب الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام. Many of the Ashab, many, many Ashab of the Prophet were buried in this place of land. Amongst them is the noble companion Ubad, Ubad ibn Samad, ibn Samad. And he's from the Qabila, the family of Khazraj. وهو أحد النخباء الاثنى عشر الذين بايعوا الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام في بيعة العقبة الأولى. He was amongst the twelve people who made the oath of allegiance on the 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 bayar. وهذا الصحابي الجليل وضعه أمير المؤمنين عمر أول قاضٍ وحاكمٍ في أرض فلسطين. 
This is the Sahaba, the Sahabi, the companion that the Prophet that Sayyidina Umar made the Hakim, that is the ruler over that land. The second companion that we're going to speak about is Shaddad ibn Aus. وشدال ابن أوس له ذرية وله أولاد كلهم من أهل الصلاح والفلاح والنجاح في هذه الأرض المباركة. And this companion he has many children. الحمد لله that was successful and pious all in from that land. وكذلك الصحابي الجليل تميم ابن أوس الداري. And also another companion تميم ابن أوس الداري. وعائلة التميميين والداريين موجودة في أرض الخليل إلى اليوم. And this family, the Tamimiyin family, the Tamimi family, and the Dariyin family are still present until today. And also the family of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, the family of Abu Bakri, this family is also still present in this present day. وعائلة سيدنا خالد بن الوليد الخالديين موجودون إلى اليوم. فاملي خالد بن الوليد بن الوليد نون از خالديين وأوسو بريزنت إن ذيس بلاسيت. والصحابي الجليل أبو ذر الغفاري عائلته موجودة إلى اليوم. And the companions of Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, his, his uh, children, his uh, lineage, that family also exists in this world. Many, many families that still exist today and whose children are existing and living right now at this moment in time are from the noble companions of the Rasulullah Allah, did you know that this companion, Tamim uh, Dari, actually met the Dajjal? This is narrated in the Sahih of Muslim. This Tamim Tamim was a Christian and he became Muslim at the hand of the Holy Prophet and memorized the entire Quran in the presence of the Prophet and it's been mentioned that this companion he would recite the entire Quran from Isha to Fajr near to the Bab al Multazam in the Kaaba al Mushar. All the Quran in one Raka. All the Quran. جاء السلطان صلاح الدين الذي فتح القدس الشريف في سنة 583 من الهجرة في ليلة السابع والعشرين من شهر رجب والتي ناسبت ليلة الإسراء والمعراج. الله. And then of course صلاح الدين يوبي 583 after Hijri is the date in which he came and and conquered this blessed land. صلاح الدين يوبي. ومن المؤسف جدا في هذه السنة في ليلة السابعة والعشرين من شهر رجب أتعرفون من جاء إلى زيارة القدس الشريف والمسجد الأقصى؟ And it is with great sadness he has to say, do you know on this same day, 27th of Rajab, who is it that came to this blessed land? من منكم يعرف؟ Who amongst you knows? من جاء قبل أسبوعين؟ وزار المسجد الأقصى في ليلة السابع والعشرين من شهر رجب التي ناسبت فتح بيت المقدس على يد البطل السلطان صلاح الدين الأيوبي. Who knows? The question is asking. Two weeks prior, on that blessed night, 27th of Rajab, somebody came and visited that same place. جاء لزيارة المسجد الأقصى باب الفاتيكان. Person who came was the Pope. وهو يرسل للمسلمين رسالة. and he gave and delivered a message to the Muslims. 
إذا كان صلاح الدين قد فتح لكم بيت المقدس في مثل هذا الوقت فأنا أفتح بيت المقدس للنصارى في نفس الوقت. He said that just as on this blessed night, the same date, but many many years previously, Salah al-Din Ayyubi came and he conquered this land for the Muslims. I too am coming here today on this night, that same date, to make open this place for the Christians. وبفضل الله تبارك وتعالى نحن نرى أن الفتح والنصر قريب في بيت المقدس إن شاء الله. And we hope and we pray and we see the word he used in Iran, we see that this, this uh, opening and the word is fatha, which means literally opening, but the, the, you know, the ability to be free in that land is inshallah that time will come soon. These are good, good glad tidings, inshallah, will come soon, inshallah. Never despair and never, never lose hope from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is the, 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 the right, haqqan alayhi, this is the right upon us that we have. وقال إن لننصر رسلنا والذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا ويوم يقوم الأشهاد. And we will certainly, definitely help. ننصر. We will certainly, definitely help those who who work in the path of Allah. ولكن النصر يحتاج إلى زمن. But نصر, this help, this victory also is dependent upon a a price. الله تعالى ذكره في قوله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن تنصر الله ينصر الله. And that price Allah subhanahu wa taala says that you will receive the victory from Allah if you help Him. وفي قوله تعالى إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن له الجنة. And also the verse of the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the believers have exchanged for themselves their own lives. When Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam qala fi al-hadith al-sahih la tazal ta'ifatun min ummati ala al-khayr zahirin li'aduwihim qahirin qalu aynahum ya Rasulullah qala bi bayti al-maqdisi wa akna fi bayti al-maqdis. الحديث المطبع عليه الصلاة والسلام كمل لا تزال طائفة من أمتي على الحق ظاهرين. They will always be your ummah will always unite on the حق. A group of people. A group of people amongst you will always unite. A group of people amongst you will unite and they will be united on 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 the on the reality on the truth. ولعدوهم قاهرين. And against their their enemies they will be forceful. وعندما سأل الصحابة أين هم يا رسول الله؟ قال ببيت المقدس وأكناف بيت المقدس. And when Allah subhanahu wa taala was happy was asked where will this happen and he said this will be in بيت المقدس in Jerusalem. ولذلك نحن أمة الإسلام وأنتم أهل الإسلام وقد تربيتم على الإسلام وجلستم مع علماء الإسلام واجب عليكم. And to serve your brothers in the Holy Mosque. And you, as 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 being members or part of the Ummah of Islam, it is and he used the word wajib alaykum. It is necessary upon you. It is incumbent upon you to help your brothers and sisters as as the, as part and parcel of this Ummah of Islam in Palestine. زيارتكم لبيت المقدس مساعدة لأهل بيت المقدس وشرف لهم في الصمود أمام أعدائه. Your visiting, your traveling, and your going to and visiting that blessed land is a is, is a is a sign of strength for the Muslims there in that land, and also a a, uh, a retaliatory uh, message to those enemies of Islam. إذا لم تستطيعوا أن تذهبوا فأرسلوا بزيت يسرج في قناديله. If you're not able to go yourself. And send, send, um, send for uh, oil. Of course, send uh, in the form of taqsid al-man. 
So if you can't go yourself, then, then send your wealth to help those people who are there. وأنتم أهل الخير في هذه الليلة المباركة في ليلة النصف من شهر شعبان هذه الليلة التي تنزل فيها الرحمات الإلهية والبركات الربانية الله تبارك وتعالى يتقبل أعمالكم الصالحة ويتقبل صلواتكم ودعواتكم وقيامكم وصيامكم وتهجدكم وتسبيحكم وعملكم الصالح في هذه الليلة المباركة إن شاء الله and you on this blessed land, he says that you are very, on this blessed night, you are very, very uh, blessed because it is on this night that inshallah, all of your good deeds, all of your amal, all of the good worship that you do inshallah on this particular blessed night is a night of acceptance of all of those good deeds. وأن يأخذ الاحتلال من تلك الأرض المباركة وأن يثبت المسلمين فيها ثباتا إلى يوم الدين وأن يرفع فيها راية الإسلام والمسلمين. We hope and pray that on this blessed night we ask you to join us in that prayer through you through your pure souls that Allah subhanahu wa taala grants victory and grants freedom to the Muslims of Palestine and that blessed land of Palestine. ونحن ندعو الله سبحانه وتعالى. أن يفرج عنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ونصلي ونسلم على النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله أن نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغناء نسألك اللهم علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا وعملا صالحا متقبلا يا رب العالمين نسألك اللهم أن تغفر الذنوب وأن تفرج الكروب وأن تستر العيوب وأن تبين لنا الذنوب اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدير وقهر الرجال اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر ومن عذاب جهنم ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن فتنة المسيح الدجال يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا واقبلنا وعافنا واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا وسامحنا وعلى الإيمان الكامل والسنة توفنا وانتراضا عنا يا كريم واغفر لنا ولوالدينا ووالديكم ولأموات المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم أمواتنا يا رب العالمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين نشكركم جميعا ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجمعنا وإياكم في جنات ونهر في مقعد صدق عند مليك مقتدر وأخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين